It's a simple movie with a simple title, starring ex-Japanese AV star Asami as Mayumi, the gun woman. It fits firmly in the Japanese genre of crazy action movies, a movie that doesn't take itself too seriously, but sets out to thrill and entertain the audience for 90 minutes. But does knowing that excuse the quality of the movie? Could it be as bad as it sounds? We think you might be surprised with Gun Woman, the story it wants to tell you, and the way it ends up doing that. You ever heard the uh, Hamazaki story? Yes. Tell you what, if Hamazaki didn't have such a fucking monster for a kid, he could have made a name for himself in Japanese politics. Shot okay. in the US in English and Japanese, this movie tells the story of two men driving to Vegas recounting the tale of a doctor and his assassin. The doctor is seeking revenge for the murder of his wife at the hands of a sadistic and rich Japanese man. This man has a fetish for necrophilia, and the doctor plans to use this to his advantage. He buys a broken Japanese woman, Mayumi, who is addicted to drugs. And once he breaks her addiction, he turns it into his assassin. He trains her in combat and weaponry, and when he's ready to strike his target, he surgically inserts the parts of a handgun into Mayumi's body where she must play dead and then strike at the right time to fulfill her mission. Her reward? Freedom. What was the plan for the revenge? Hamazaki's son, he's got bodyguards 24-7, right? This house is like, it's like a fucking fortress. On top of that, the bastard's crippled. He was a mastermind. His plan was perfect. Yes, you heard that right. The doctor has to surgically insert the part of the gun into Mayumi and she has to play dead. So where does he insert the parts? Well, the top of the gun is placed inside the top of her left breast. The body of the gun is inserted in her torso while the magazine is inserted, well, in another place that he doesn't need to cut open. We'll let you use your imagination for that one. It's easy to dismiss the plot and style as some stupid movie to be ignored. But as we've discussed before on this channel, not all movies have to be blockbusters. Some movies are worth watching just because they sound crazy, silly and stupid enough to be fun. Lovers of nude Japanese girls are in for a treat here, with Asama frequently shedding her clothing for the camera. For those of you who are into that kind of thing, the last 20 minutes or so feature our main actress naked and covered in blood. You have been warned. Being a Japanese movie, there is some interesting censorship in the title even for the international version. We reviewed the Australian Region B Blu-ray disc, and in the full frontal nude scene of the movie's main target, the shot of his penis was blurred out. However, no such blurring occurs on Asami's scenes, rendering this an odd choice. As far as we can tell, the Australian Blu-ray release is the uncut version, with only the UK DVD release being censored beyond the original cuts. And in keeping in the tradition of Japanese cinema, this film is very gory especially towards the finale. The two surgical scenes are especially bloody, but there is a good chance something like that probably won't be bothering you. Interestingly, it's not the crazy plot, copious amounts of blood or gratuitous nudity that's the problem with this film. It is in fact something far more simple and well within the controls of the production crew, and that's the production issues with the film. There are frequent overexposed shots which initially seem deliberate, but by the end of the film you're wondering if the camera operator was just a very inexperienced person using the equipment for the first time. Likewise with the editing, and this is far more apparent in the first half of the film, where numerous shots are repeated, sometimes from a different angle, but usually the same shot. It's odd to experience this as it doesn't feel like this should be deliberate. It feels like something the director and editor are scrambling to insert additional footage into the movie that they forgot to film and hoped no one would notice. And then there is the awkward English speaking scenes. At times there is a vibe of two different movies that have been intercut together, almost like an American producer has seen this short Japanese movie and decided to add 40 more minutes of footage and turn it into a feature length. It's even more odd when you consider the English scenes take up a bulk of the first half while the Japanese scenes take up a bulk of the second half. This is the kind of hidden gem that Troma would release, and in fact, it's a shame this isn't being released by Troma, as it would have been given more exposure beyond an obscure Blu-ray release and YouTube streaming. This is worth a watch, as long as you know what you're getting yourself in for. 
Come <laughs> on.